Joining me now is Robert Reich, Secretary of Labor in the Clinton administration and Professor of Public Policy at the University of California, Berkeley. Mr. Reich, it's always good to talk to you. I just want to go through with you because Republicans really do constantly say their goals are tax cuts and deregulation. It's the other half to their tax cut zeal. But this is what the Trump administration did as far as rail deregulation alone. They reversed this Obama air rule. It would have required braking system upgrades for high hazard trains that are hauling flammable liquids. They changed the safety rules to allow for rail transport of highly flammable liquefied natural gas. They ended those regular safety audits, as I mentioned earlier. They suspended a pending rule requiring freight trains to have at least two crew members. They placed a veteran of the chemical industry in charge of the EPA's chemical safety office, where she made industry friendly changes to how the agency studied health risks. And by the way, these are that that is one of just 240 significant deregulatory actions and just 97 significant regulatory ones. It's a ratio of 2.5 to one. This is the future Republicans want. And now they've got it in Ohio, sir. Uh, well, that's absolutely right, Joy. And the problem is that big corporations put an, a lot of money into campaigns. Follow the money. Uh, those lobbyists and that money are designed to get, what, tax cuts and regulatory so-called relief. Uh, and it's when you're dealing with health and safety and environmental regulations, you're, you're playing with people's lives if you get rid of those. Uh, and we see this, or whether it's a train derailment or it's children who are working in meatpacking plants or wherever you look in America, big corporations who have been relieved, and again, they use this term relief, relieved of these health, safety, and environmental regulations and labor regulations, actually are exposing the public, consumers and workers, to more and more hazards. Uh, this is a direct redistribution of income and wealth uh, from average working people to uh, the biggest investors and the biggest billionaires in America. I mean, this literally happened in Ohio. You know, Mike DeWine, the governor there, received money for his inaugural. Um, he received money and support, but it was a bipartisan effort. I mean, the, the, the Norfolk Southern has been pumping money into the politicians in Ohio to make sure that they are lightly regulated and that they fight against additional federal regulation. This has been the theme, but across, as you said, the Republican Party is constantly saying that if you do more deregulation, it's going to make things cheaper. It's going to be better for the consumer. They, they, they tried to make it sound like it's a good deal for the consumer. But I just want to show you the map of where Norfolk Southern goes. Norfolk Southern is not just carrying chemical, hazardous chemicals to Ohio. They go all the way down to Florida, which is already an ecological disaster in terms of the climate crisis. This stuff could derail anywhere. And what Republicans are saying is, no, you don't want the federal government to regulate it. They just need to come in and fix it after the, the, the chemicals are already in the water. Well, it's a form, Joy, of trickle-down economics. I mean, basically, they're saying, let companies make as much money as possible, let billionaires who are investing in these companies make huge amounts of money, and eventually the benefits will trickle down to everybody else. The reality is the benefits don't trickle down to everybody else. If you deregulate, if you get rid of health, safety, labor, and environmental regulations, you are exposing more and more people to uh, corporate greed. Uh, it, uh, look, the, the, one of the things the Republicans love to do is accuse Democrats uh, of being, uh, what, socialists, of communists, uh, as if the real choice is between socialism and, 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 and capitalism. No, capitalism uh, requires guardrails. Uh, greed requires some constraints. Regulation uh, for the last 150 years is the way we in this country have said to big corporations, go ahead, make as much money as possible, but protect the public. We ask you, we demand that the public be protected. You know, what's interesting, too, is that, you know, during Republican administrations, you see things like the EPA administrators from the chemical industry. You know, each of these agencies gets handed over to somebody who came from the industry, and they're the ones who are supposedly doing the regulation. So even when they're doing some form of federal regulation, it's the bad guys policing themselves. <laughs> 
Well, that's right. It's the it's the foxes policing the hen houses, and you can't you just can't do that. Uh, I mean, it, whether whether it comes in the form of big campaign contributions or it comes in the form of a revolving door in which the company's executives are temporarily try uh, overseeing regulations, uh, it, it's the same result, and the result is the public is sacrificed. The public interest is being sacrificed. Is has there ever been a time when a state? alone on its own could handle something like what we've seen in Palestine, Ohio. I mean, in the end, this comes down to the federal government is the only one with the wherewithal to actually do the fixing. So now what you're seeing is that the EPA has to come in. The company did some water quality tests. It was a disaster. Everything they've tried to do themselves is a disaster. It, it, it does feel like the federal government actually has a purpose as much as Republicans seem to despise it. Yes, and when Ronald Reagan said uh, 40 years ago, uh, you know, the, the government is your enemy, uh, you know, don't trust the government. Uh, unfortunately, that view seeped into American consciousness to the point where uh, we, we don't really feel that the government is on our side. Uh, and every time Republicans in particular, not, I'm not blaming, you know, the Democrats share some of this blame, but every time in particular Republicans are in control, they justify that distrust of government because they do such a bad job protecting the public. Uh, that's why we've got to get into this vicious cycle, reverse the vicious cycle, uh, and and make sure that the private sector is working for America, is making us better off, not just the top executives, not just the biggest shareholders, but all of us, whether we are buying products, whether we are in the communities where these products are being created, uh, whether we are consumers uh, or, or workers, uh, it yeah. doesn't matter. We all need some degree of protection. 